600 meters away. Not in the scope, and uh, it looks like a shootable buck. Trying to make our way through these ferns to get closer to look at the buck. So we'll see. Take them when you're ready. Okay. That was a miss. Okay, keep following, keep following them. You stop, take them again. Right. The buck presented itself beautifully, 120, 30 meters. The evening sun was on him, he was glowing red and everything was perfect. Broadside, I thought it was a good shot. It seemed like I saw impact over the top of his back. He stood still and then he jumped. He ran on for 100 meters maybe. Okay, keep following, keep following him. Don't stick him again. I aimed a bit high. Didn't see anything in the shot. We haven't seen him come out from that slope. So, um, that's exciting stuff, this. Now we're gonna wait a little bit. We're gonna try to focus on if we see the buck moving. If not, we're gonna slowly approach the, the top of the hill to see if he's uh, wounded. Preferably he's dead. But if he is wounded, we'll be ready to shoot again. I'll take the magnification down on the on the scope so we're ready to shoot because it will be probably be on the move. Um, again, the wind is very important. Now it's steadily coming from the valley, so we'll be in a side wind, which is good. The, the straight pull system here gives me extra time to find the target on shot number two. I don't have to worry about pushing it forward. I don't have to worry about so much movement. So I'm quicker on to the next shot. It felt like I could actually get a shot off before he moved. I was that quick back on the target and I could see him standing after the first shot. Um, so I could easily follow him all the way up. He was running with his rump towards us so I couldn't shoot him on the move. But as soon as he stopped, I was uh, dead on him. So that gives you precious seconds when it really counts. Now here's a blood trail. And here he is. 